Uh, it's just after 6 o'clock on Thursday, October 24th, 2024. This is a uh, director's meeting of Abington Community Access and Media, Inc., Abington CAM. That's the private nonprofit 501c3 corporation that runs the table access television studio here in Abington. Tonight, we're having our director's meeting first, as advertised, and then... Um, once we close that meeting, we'll be having our annual members meeting. So um, the first item on the agenda for the director's meeting is approval of meeting minutes. I thought they were well written, and I'd make a motion to accept those meeting minutes. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. Thank you, Peter. Uh, so that is our only business for the director's meeting, unless anybody has something else. Move to adjourn. We have a motion. We have a second. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So now we will open our meeting of the annual members meeting required by the corporate bylaws um, tonight we have uh, four directors present and two members in our audience so if we did have a bylaw change or a new director to vote in um, according to the bylaws we couldn't do that because we need either five directors or 15 members to be able to vote any changes. Um, we have none proposed, so that's not a problem. Mm -hmm. We do have um, our executive director's report. Now, would you like me to tell the banking? Yeah, I, I, I could take that, Lisa. I know you compiled yeah, a lot of the details. Please. Just for the, the benefit of our, our members, uh, we continue to be a successfully operated organization. Abington CAM has at present about $1.1 million uh, banked or in money market CDs, checking, uh, but in total and annuities are included in that. Mm -hmm. um, specifically spelled out the bank total just north of 400000 checking, roughly 45000 CD deposits are around 105700 Money market about two hundred and fifty nine thousand, and the annuities, if I didn't say that already, are six hundred and twenty five thousand. Those start coming to maturity in another year, but those are deferred over different times. It's not all at once. Um, the total is about one point one million that we have access to. Yes. Any questions on any of those details? No, thank you very much. Thank you. So um, the other page in your packet is just uh, from the Secretary of State's website. It has our um, director's term expiration dates on it. As I said, we don't have um, either five directors or 15 members in the audience to vote the changes in. So um, Bob Malloy and Peter Walter's terms are both up this year. And um, they remain on until replaced or um, reappointed by five directors or 15 members. Um, Jessica has been reappointed by the school committee, so we're good there. And that's enough of that. Uh, can we have our executive director's report, please? Sure. Uh, as you see, uh, each of you has a, a packet. Yes. Uh, members in the audience, there are packets that are up at the table. Uh, we'll start with staff updates. Um, uh, departures, uh, starting with Ian Deming, uh, who was hired in December 2022, 20, uh, uh, has uh, left his full-time position as of June 21st, 2023. Promotions. Uh, Matt Lyons has been elevated from part-time status to a full-time producer. Uh, he will be in this role until January of 2025, when he will travel to Los Angeles, California to finish his final semester at Emerson, 
the plan is to have him work remotely until June when he graduates. Uh, additions, Mike Simmons uh, was recently hired as a part-time producer. Mike has more than 17 years in local cable TV uh, as he works full-time for Brockton Community Access. Uh, part-time hours from October 1st, 2023 uh, to September 30th, 2024, 1,241 hours or just a bit more than that. Student interns, uh, there's you'll see that there's actually um, two sets of numbers, uh, school for the school year, 2023 to 2024. Uh, we had five seniors, three juniors, four freshmen, and one uh, eighth grader or grade eight student. Um, some of the episodic programs uh, included uh, senioritis, which has been a staple for the past few years for the uh, senior class members who want to talk about what it's like going through the final year of school, along with uh, a couple of other intern uh, programs, Mid Mid Afternoon Show, Jack and Becca, and Green Wave Gaming. I've also added in here uh, the current school year, which is the 24-25 school year interns. We have two seniors, four sophomores, one freshman, and two grade eight interns. They are volunteers. Uh, right now, uh, early on, we have two shows. One is Senior Writers, uh Version 2025, as well as a Food Challenge show. Uh, these meetings are held, uh, the intern meetings are held every Thursday. And uh, during the summer, we created a new point system. And this is to kind of help uh, get them to be a little bit more motivated uh, with a point system. There is actually in your packet, you will see the what they get points for. Uh, this will happen in two, uh, two phases from October to December. They have a chance to accumulate points and the, the top three, there'll be some kind of prize at the end of the uh, rainbow for their, for their efforts. Again, they're still being paid. This is just a little extra incentive, incentive to kind of yeah. get them into, uh, to kind of get them to be more involved uh, as we compete with a lot of other school clubs and sports. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is just something to kind of put a little extra cherry on top. Uh, intern uh, hours payroll. I uh, see I have uh, October to December 2023, uh, 207 hours for $3,105. January to June 2024, uh, 617 hours for $9,257. And then from July to August, 73 hours for $1,134 total hours of 891, 898 hours for uh, $13,507. I know that uh, there was a time we were discussing trying to find more ways to have them involved. I think we are we're achieving that at this particular time. Uh, as I try to do every time we meet, uh, give you an update on some of our marketing and outreach, utilizing social media, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or X, uh, YouTube, we are up across the board as always. Uh, Cablecast program, programming, uh, 883 new shows added to the new playback system. Uh, as folks may or may not know, this is a combination of government meetings, municipal, uh, government meetings, community events, uh, and many of the sports that we do coverage uh, for. Um, there's a breakdown of the municipal meetings uh, that are here. As you know, as I may note, uh, I try to alternate these with every report in July. It gave you a different set of aspects as to some of the things that we do, whether it was sports or com um, community shows. I did kind of give a breakdown on the episodic programs uh, from October 1st of 2023 to October 1st, 2024. Uh, new, reoccur new recurring series. Happens to be the uh, Abington Veterans Muster. That's a monthly veteran show that is produced here and released the first Tuesday of the month. Um, also, breakdown of our podcast uh, as we produced 42 different podcasts uh, from uh, last October to this October. Uh, Cable system and HD channels. So the new tightrope system was installed in June and is uh, up and running smoothly. Comcast and Verizon uh, have installed equipment for the new HD channels. 
Uh, Comcast Channel 1072 went live uh, in, in September, while the Verizon Channel 2128 went live within the past week. Uh, the quality of the content on this on that particular channel will be 1080i or I greater. Um, surplus equipment update. Uh, there have been attempts to try to sell our surplus equipment that we no longer could use, but the thought is maybe there are people out there. Uh, we've had limited success. Uh, I am seeking alternatives to liquidate or el uh, eliminate the remaining gear. Do they have like a consignment? Because I know in our, our world we have a um, company that we go to consign it. I can know? check, but with the consignment there's a cost, but with the, the age of this equipment, I would be curious if it would be worth anybody's while to do so, but it's definitely worth something I can look I into. I didn't know if they had that in the, yep. the, you know, the digital world. Uh, miscellaneous news. Um, Abbott Camp Football actually made the Sports Center's top 10. Uh, if you look in your packet, there's actually a. Uh, we made also the local, uh, the, the Patriot Ledger, as they, they note that it, it made, it was the first football of the game, a uh, first football game of the year, mm -hmm. where uh, it was a fantastic catch made by Ryan Salamini. Uh, our cameras captured it. And uh, ESPN uh, liked it that much that it, ended, it made them a five. Nice. If you actually want to see it, it is actually uh, sh it's featured in the first episode of The Buzz for season four, which is now playing on on uh, on cable and is available on YouTube. Live streaming sports uh, for the school year twenty four twenty five. Um, this is an interesting subject because. It comes where last year I had, a, I had a few parents who were very passionate, wanted to know why we weren't live streaming a majority of their particular child's sports, why weren't we going to every playoff game. And I did my best to say, well, we do the best we can with the limited people, with the, with the limited staff that we have. I mean, everybody's welcome to volunteer. Huh? After that, everybody's welcome to volunteer. And oh. we will, yes, it's worth noting that we will train anybody who is willing to come mm -hmm. in if they want to learn how to take the game. It's worth noting, and, and I think I have uh, shared the information with this board uh, over the past few years, that we average between 170 and 200 games per school year that we cover. And we cover the gamut, whether it's track and field, tennis. Now, have you uh, not been able to hire a full-time to replace we have it's not it's not a matter of having a full-time person but we're not we're not just sports we're also oh, know. we're expected to just to do all the municipal meetings to cover community events um, but it's also a matter of live streaming and having someone who's competent enough to do that and it's i think it's virtually impossible to be able to live stream every mm -hmm. event now no every event no no but the idea is that folks want even when they're home games people want their games live streamed and it's not necessarily that, it's just that they want to see it. But we have become so popular that they have family members that are all over the country mm -hmm. and parts of the world that want to watch this. I actually had a small little debate with someone on social media who had sent us a message to our Abington Cam Facebook page asking why they cannot watch the game because they live in Maine. It was kind enough to say, well, if you are somebody who lives in Abington, uh, or even if you have Verizon, because Verizon will showcase other uh, communities on, you know, on their particular uh, subscriber base. Mm -hmm. um, that we put the games up within 24 to 48 hours, right. and this this is an edited game. A lot of we have, have graphics. Uh, some of our sports have instant replay, depending on the sport that we're covering. Mm -hmm. They'll have commentary, but people want to be able to watch watch the game from the comfort of their home. And, and unfortunately, it's gotten to the point where I, I thought that this year, because I had someone say, well, you, you, we don't feel that you're fair enough. There's just some sports you may do more live streaming than others. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, well, I will take that into account. And how, the many, is, how many do you live stream? It, it depends. It depends on every, every sport is different. I try to do anywhere between three to four, and then that's excluding playoffs. Mm -hmm. But we, we try to 
which yeah. I was looking for, but I couldn't see. And again, we put it up on YouTube. I mean, there's so many different avenues for folks to be able to watch. We we will play it on the education channel. So you, you, oh, okay, so you do tape them and put them up after. Yeah, but yeah the challenge about becoming lunch. live stream or it's, after the replay. That's recording. why I was right. trying to do people, live stream. But people are at to the point where they don't want to wait until the replay. Sure. They want to see it as it happens. It's incredible. It's kind of a world we live mm -hmm. in. The problem that we've, because we have worked so hard, because of the staff that we have has done such a great job, that there's an expectation that people want everything to be live streamed. Mm -hmm. And they expect to get everything for zero. And they want to have family members be able to. And they, they think that every game is a special event. Well, it is to them. It is to them. And, and, I, I, and I understand that. Mm -hmm. But we have limitations. Yeah, we, we have do limitations. have limitations. We have staff limitations. We, we, have, we have limitations. And, and is it a matter of saying, all right, well, we won't live stream anything. Do we do no, that? No, we don't want to do that. We don't want to do that. But, but then there's also the, well, you live stream all the basketball games, but you don't live stream all the soccer games. Well, that's different because the outside, we don't necessarily live stream. We actually have a partnership with the school, with the boosters, to have where to be able to live stream it because every game is, is not only live streamed, but it's also something that's shown on cable. Mm -hmm. It's apples and oranges. It's different. But trying to explain it to some people, they just get more and more frustrated. So I just wanted to kind of bring this to your attention that this is something that I'm that's being wrestled with. We're trying to be fair. We're trying no, to be. I didn't hear anything about it. Nobody came to me. <laughs> I just want to make sure that I'm being transparent and that I'm bringing mm -hmm. this forth. That we try to be thoughtful. I mean, we like so tonight. Tonight there's a football game, and it's homecoming. But again, we're trying to pick and choose. Yeah, last week they played their rival, uh, Rockland. Mm -hmm. We thought that that was an important game to live stream, and we did. The thought was, well, you live stream last week's game. Why can't you live stream this week's game? Oh, and I actually had to have some conversations with parents uh, about it, and and someone felt felt to saw that, you know, one sport is has done, does is more seen as a greater sport in the community than others and some people go no 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 and we'll push back and yeah but football has more parent volunteers that's basically what it is that's why sure uh, again I, i'm here to try to be fair and equitable and try to we're, we're customer service here mm -hmm. and we want to be as fair and in the best we can to extend the live can, streaming right. service that's all um quick note is also talking about uh, the website and live streaming we uh, a little bit of a, an issue not sure if it has something to do with the installation of the uh, high depth channels. Our live stream on the website at the moment is is down. So the three uh, channels that we would you normally be able to view, not able to at the moment. Uh, I have an ongoing conversation with Cablecast and uh, our web uh, manager, uh, and hopefully we can have that resolved soon. How long has it been down? Probably about three or four days. We have a contract for that service too, didn't we? purchased the warranty with that we purchased the warranty but i'm not sure if we if we purchased the reflex service okay so again it's something i'm looking to Underway. looking into um as always it's something that someone makes i, mean, I try to check weekly yeah last week it was up there were no problems someone alerted me to it two days ago and said hey do you know this so once I'm, no, we'll I'm aware of it, right. I, I, I try to be uh, reactive there to is it. no way to tell like it doesn't send you an alert that it's down or anything no which is not. Not there yet. People do. <laughs> uh, fourth Annual Middle School Film Camp. Uh, very successful. We had 11 students for uh, little middle school students, not only for the first session, but for the second session. Oh, that's good. Uh, earlier on in the report, I don't know if you noticed that I had mentioned about uh, uh, gaining two eighth graders. Mm -hmm. Two of those eighth graders came from oh, that, film from the film camp, that's because great. they liked it so much. Uh, and that, if you jump down right to uh, middle school student involvement, uh, those two students want to bring in friends and want to do be more active with the studio. That's great. So we could have upwards to four or five middle school students. I've had a conversation with the principal, Mr. Uh, with uh, Matt McCurtain. Mm -hmm. uh, he says as long as we have some kind of permission slip and, and we are engaged with the parents, uh, he embraces it. Because it's more like the volunteer hours, so that it's when volunteer. they come in as a freshman, they'll be actually a paid intern, right? Exactly. So that's, that's, a, good, that's it's a good feeder lead up system. Too. Yeah. Okay. Um, also in your packet uh, is we have um, public, uh, public and student correspondence. Um, the top one is the top two. One is from Adam Gunn, 
who is the town's veteran service officer, uh, followed by uh, uh, Travis Partington, who is the host, and I believe that he serves on the veterans committee for the town. Yes, he does. Travis is the host of uh, Abington Veterans uh, Muster, and both of them wanted to uh, write in to say express their um, how much they like doing the show here and appreciate what we offer here at Abington Camp. Kevin, in fairness, they also offer a nice, some nice words about you. So thank you for what you're doing there. I know that no, was a thanks. summer set of letters, but I, I know it's ongoing, and I think mm-hmm. it's a nice tribute to you. Yep. And there's also uh, other students. We had a, a one student who actually sent us a, a letter saying that um, they have, they like being able to watch all of their stuff from the, their teams uh, that we film. Um Another student, this student is actually from the film camp who actually liked it so much. She felt the need to send us a thank thank you letter. Uh, And then two of our uh, outgoing interns uh, who wanted to say how much they enjoyed their time here at Abington Camp. Uh, And finally, tomorrow we will launch our fall newsletter. So please uh, keep an eye on your inboxes. Mm -hmm. Any questions? No. No. Good job, Kevin. So. I won't itemize the kids' notes, but I think that was pretty cool. I know. So, well done, kids that sent those in. Nice tribute. Very nice. That is our last agenda item for our annual meeting. Is there anything else? Not from me. Not from me. Motion. Move to. Motion to adjourn. To adjourn. I'd second that motion. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.